Hi, my name is Ime, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Your Little China Girl. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to incorporate floor work into your modern Egyptian cabaret belly dance numbers. Now, floor work is a really beautiful enhancement to any choreography, but it's absolutely not necessary. So I really caution people, use it sparingly, and perhaps not at all in certain circumstances, for example, in places where it's very, very tight. This is my cat, Charles Monet. He's going to join us here. Do you want to do some belly dance? He actually knows some yoga. Um, there's some places you don't want to do floor work in, and that's in very tight spaces where people are very close to you. Also, in a situation where you have audience members everywhere, especially if you're costuming, calls for you to basically part your legs in such a way where you might be pointing uh, towards somebody. So you want to make certain that you don't have audience members in a certain direction or that you can cover your legs, for example. Um, I like to use floor work when there's a high point in a piece of music and then it suddenly comes down into something dramatic. So there might be sort of a, a musical pause in the music where something else is happening where there's tension but it's maybe not as busy or as happy or as um, strong. And so that might be a moment where I can get onto the ground. Now the easiest way to get onto the ground would simply to do hip bumps. And you can do that almost in any costume that allows some leg room. So a mermaid skirt would even do that because you wouldn't have to actually part your thighs very much. You could just go straight down, hip drop, putting one foot behind you, coming straight on down until you can get a knee onto the ground and then the other. Same thing with coming up, you can undulate and one leg is behind you for support. If you can't do that, you want to think about the costume you're going to wear. I like to use a skirt that's either a full circle skirt and harem pants underneath, or if I'm doing a uh, more of an A-line skirt, it's got to have room at the bottom for me to part my legs. It's got to have some give to it and stretchiness. Also that they slit can't be any higher than the outside part of my thigh when I touch it with my finger. So I want that slit to be fairly low. So here's an example of a belt that would work really well with that. And it's because I'll show you it, when it's sitting on the hip, on the outside part of the thigh, the beading doesn't hang low. And that's because I'm going to be casting myself onto the ground on my left side, for example. And I don't want to be actually throwing myself on the beading. I'm going to be coming down here on the outside part of my thigh. Here's the matching bra that goes with that. This is actually a Bella. It has some nice uh, fall colors in it. So the first thing I want to teach you, if you don't want to just do hip drops down, is to do a hesitation turn to get myself on the ground. My turn, that I call the hesitation turn, is a right, a hesitate to the left, a turn, and then a preparation to throw myself on the ground by casting left and using the counterbalance of my right leg behind me to keep to, to help my fall and momentum go in this direction. So again, it's going to look like hesitate right or lunge right, hesitate left, turn, and down. Again, right, left, turn, and then you're going to want to cast down, come on the outside part of your leg, not on the knee, not on the bone, and then your right leg is going to be extended behind you. Again, how this looks in real time. Now that I'm down on the ground, what can I do from here? I've got my right leg extended. I've just cast myself on the outer part of my left thigh, and I have probably my left hand down for support. I can bring my right arm over the head for a nice little stretch there, bringing the hand on down, a little finger undulation. I can also cross my arm across me. Here's my kitty cat again. And shake that outer leg and a little bit of a shiver shimmy on that leg, which shows it really nicely on the beading on your dress. Next, I'm going to face my knees towards the left side here. 
And that's because if I am going to face my right side to an audience and my left and my knees are pointing off to the left and there's no audience there, I'm free to split my legs there and not worry about if I'm showing anything at all. Undulating, using the hands in that undulation. When I'm ready to come on down, I'm going to tuck my chin towards my chest, split the legs, and come on down, laying myself in between my knees. Here I can do undulations with the arms to the sides. When I'm ready to come up, I'm going to press on the inside of my feet, my knees, and that inner thigh area, tucking the chin, again, deep breath, pressing on up, and undulating up. Bring the legs together. You can take your right leg, that's the one that's going to be covered if the slit is on the left. Coming on up, strike pose. So that's another way that you can get down on the floor using that hesitation turn and juicing that time and then coming on up when it's appropriate, when the, maybe the musical phrase has finished for your floor work section. Now if you have some great suggestions on how you use floor work in your modern pieces, please send a video comment back here on my channel, Your Little China Girl, or leave a text comment. Let us know how you put that into your routines. My name is E. May, and you're watching Your Little China Girl. Thanks for watching.